I've never taught the book of Revelation, stayed away from it on purpose, but today God's opened a can of worms for all of us. He's been open. Why did God pick a five year old to prophesy about the wreck downtown a couple of hours before it even happened? She was listening. Huh? She was listening. She was listening to God. And God picks children. Foolish things. We get wise in our study of doctrine. We get wise in our self. I've been I've been in the way forty years, but it's time to get out of the way. Okay? It's time to become like Christ. And God's plan is still going from generation to generation. I want you to understand something. If you read the chapter 11 of Hebrews, you find about the faith chapter. But it doesn't end when most interpreters end it. It goes to the next one. And it says, we are encompassed by a great cloud of witnesses. Did you know, from generation, from the beginning, with Moses, those people are here watching us. The word is, they encompass us. It means camped out around us. They're not in heaven. Now, they may be in the spiritual world, but they're here. We may have Moses with us this morning. I don't know. I know I got angels here too. They're all cheering for us. They're all all waiting for something. But you know what they're waiting for? Is us to complete the task. I said for us to complete the task. They were perfected by learning faith. But ultimately, we are the generation who will ultimately pay the greatest price and see the greatest revival. Amen. It's us. And if you can't stand the heat, you'll run out of the kitchen. And this is just heat. I was so upset last night when I come into this place and everything was going wrong. And I said, God, I can't fix any of this. You've got problems. <laughs> I went home and there was a phone call that gave the answer to the problem with the heater. I come back all the way back here. It cost me something to come back here again. It was late last night. I really wanted to be home resting, but I came here. The guy fixed it. He blew the dirt out of it. He put oil in that fan motor. And he said, and he quoted the price even if we needed a new one. A whole lot cheaper than what anybody else had. But he stayed here and he got it fixed. He really looked at the problem. You see, we had other people looking at it, but nobody really wanted to fool with the small things. He did a simple thing. The other guy said he'd take three different parts. Well, that was a lie because there's only one part up there wrong, and that's the thing. But he said, I had to clean it until I found the holes where oil goes. And he said, this thing's supposed to be oil once a year. It's a sealed bag. And he took the time to clean it out. He put the oil in it, and it took off. Well, hallelujah. But when I got home, I began to wonder why. Why Kara? You know, why did God choose her? Because she's simple enough to listen. She didn't have great theology. She just trusts God. She trusts what she did. Got home and God said, you know, this is what I'm doing to the church. And I said, what? And he said, I'm, I've got to knock dirt off of it. <laughs> Need a little oil. <laughs> Need a little oil. See, this is what's happening. This is the process. How many know the world has changed against the Christian? Every day is changing more and more. We're going to see our high courts start ruling against us. So what? As long as I have Christ. Amen. 
I won't get into the rest of it. We, I don't know what God's going to do. The rest of the day is going to be fun. Just going to enjoy it. <coughs> I guarantee you I can preach loud enough that you will be able to hear me if we don't have sound. I've done it in front of hundreds across the world. Sometimes even we probably had thousands and I didn't have a mic. But I had God. God can amplify my voice if He needs to. And you have a voice that carries anyway. And if He needs to, His voice. His voice is like many waters. It means it's like all the rivers coming together and forming an ocean. That's what that literally means. He speaks that way. You know, our problem is we got so much dirt and so much outside religion, we can't hear. Amen. Now, I, I, I love theology and all that. I don't disclaim my theology, but quite frankly, sometimes I need some neology. Okay? And I need to trust God just as simply as Jared does. Like a child. He's got it all planned. This, this is already his plan. He's got a book that tells about it. But anyway, we'll get into that later. We're just going to praise him first. The greatest time that you'll ever pay. What can I tell you? I was going through the worst time of my life. I thought I'd lost everything. And I made up my mind. I would go to church. I would stand on the front row. And I'd give it all I got. Now I was losing everything. The worst part of the drive was I passed by my place of heartbreak before I got there. But when I got there, I told the pastor I didn't want to preach, I didn't want to teach. He didn't have to worry about me doing all these things. But all I wanted to do was, if I acted silly on the front row, just give me the freedom to do that. I was going to praise with all my mind. Amen. And because of that, I have what I have today. God gave me a bundle. And you're part of it. I said, you're part of it. Amen. <coughs> But you see, I had to praise when it was bad. If you don't learn that now, you'll never make it through what's coming. Okay? So we're going to praise. Amen. Becky's going to lead us in praise. <coughs> and give it all you've got. Yes. I won't have trouble hearing me if I speak good. Uh, you won't have trouble hearing me if I speak good. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. This week, I happened to hear two different things. <clears throat> we believe in confessing the Word and what it says. And we know that the joy of their, the Lord is our strength. Yes. How many mornings have you just got up and said... I'm full of the joy of the Lord today. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> no, we're laughing because that's what I got me singing this morning. <laughs> you know, how many days have you got up and said that? Go ahead and declare the joy of the Lord. Amen. Your yeah. mind. That's right. Yeah. And the other thing I heard this week and I shared with John the other night was you know, all the situations and all the problems that we have, if they're as bad as we think they are, why does the devil have to lie about it? <laughs> think about that. <laughs> That's all I got to add. <laughs> uh, you were created anew to solve the problems somebody else. Amen. You really realize that. I'm going to show you some revelation and probably need that out of the way for a little while. But numbers fascinate me in the Word because God shows you things. He is so 
he so knows everything and he's all wisdom and power, but if you forget, you don't realize what God's up to. I'm going to show you a figure eight. Is that the way most of you make a figure eight? That's two circles that come in and they touch one another. I'm going to show you something else. Most of you don't make an eight like that. That's not an eternal eight. This is an eternal eight. Has no ending, no beginning. Everybody got that? Right. right. Okay. This is covenant. They took the word brief or a covenant means that you cut. So what they had to do was they cut an animal in two and they laid one up here and one here. And you were to start from opposite sides and you were to walk together, but you connected here twice. Everybody got that? What's the number two mean? Uh, witness. Witness. Well, covenant. 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 <laughs> two means covenant. Why is that important? <coughs> I'll show you spiritual things here. A lot of people just want it to be this time, and the cross becomes the one time you meet. <coughs> I think that's really. I'm going to prove to you by the word that's not. Covenant is the eternal thing, and it's got to meet twice. This person walks around, they've got to intersect, and then they make their other circle, and they've got to intersect again. Everybody got that? What's Christ up to? He's taking two different things, Judaism and Christianity, and by the cross, it says, He makes them one. Amen. Amen. Now, what does Christ have to do? Well, he taught them all their outward form to show them Christ. It was a schoolmaster, is what Paul said. And it was supposed to lead them to Christ because somewhere along the way they were supposed to realize they had a legal law that could not change them. Everybody got that? When you realize that, what's your only solution? <coughs> Got to go to the cross. That's where God's going to change you. You've got to come and be crucified. Your old flesh. You can't crucify yourself. My nature is I'm different from what the cross demands. The cross demands love. You see, why did Paul so fight against, of all things, Circumcision. Why didn't he fight something else about the law? He only thought about circumcision. Circumcision was the sign of a cutting, but it was only an outward cutting of reproduction. Mm -hmm. Only God can really cut and give you true reproduction. Amen. It's the circumcision of the heart. heart. That's what the word says. Everybody got that? Yeah. So there has to be two meetings at the cross where you become one. And this is what God is doing in the end time. He's bringing everything back until we're back to the cross. Only we're on the cross. If you can picture that. Mm -hmm. The book of Revelation, what... Or the book of Genesis, what was the tree in the garden that gave life? Here's a real... The tree of life. What was the tree of life? Jesus. The cross. Huh. The real tree of life is the cross. It will always be the cross. You cannot be saved without what? The cross. The cross. You cannot have a new life without what? Why is every other religion, why is it going to fail? It doesn't have a cross. But God doesn't call you to come to the cross just that one time. 
Everybody get in the picture. What he really wants for his church is to come into the place that we come back and we become one. What was Christ's life prayer? That would be one. Huh? That would be one. His life prayer was that they become one as me and the Father are. You believe it's going to come into existence? Yes. Yes. Exactly. God is working that in us today. He's going to shake a religious world. Why? Because they have forms. They never learned the way of the cross. How many know that Constantine started what we as the Gentiles call the church? Uh -huh. Well, he actually interfered. He? he interfered. Yeah, he interfered. <laughs> but how many realize what he did? God showed him a dream, and in the dream, he, God showed him the cross and says, conquer. And do you know God showed him truth? The only way that we will ever conquer the world is show the cross. Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. It's a real revelation if you get a hold of these. So, six times in the first three Gospels, I'm going to need somebody who has a King James. Anybody got a King James version? We have almost. I'm going to need a reader. We're going to read Matthew right now, 1038. Then we're going to do a little spiritual exercise. And, huh? Okay. Uh, Matthew 10, 38. Now, listen to every time that God says through one of the first three uh, writers, His message is a little different in each one. And we have to comprehend all of it because you will never fulfill your purpose until you really understand the cross. Okay? We've got to come back to the cross again the second time. That's covenant, two times. The two become, covenant is one plus one plus one equal one. That's covenant. The two become one. We become one. Okay, read Matthew 10, 38. And he that taketh on his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Okay, now 16, 24, and 25. Why does Christ repeat this? You know, in no other uh, subject does Christ repeat it in the same book of the Gospels. But for some reason, in the first three, Christ repeats it twice in every one. And ends up with six. But our number is what? We are eternal. We already have been born again. We're, I'm already living in eternity. Y'all got that. I'm not of this world. Man plus covenant. Man, Man plus, plus covenant. covenant. All right, there you got it. Man plus covenant equals eight. Oh, now you're getting a revelation. How this works. God through numbers shows you how this works. Okay? Uh, 16, 24, and 25. Listen. Man's cross Is it different? Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life will lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. You really can't find life without the cross. You see, most of us hold on to hurts and they <laughs> affect our whole life. They affect the way we deal with people. And we deal with people out of hurts. What, what's the old formula about hurt? Hurt people, hurt, hurt people. people. That's right. When we realize we're hurting people, you have to realize that didn't come from them, it came from you. It came out of you. Now, I believe in correction. But you never correct out of anger. You can correct out of love. That's the only way you'll ever get anybody to change is out of love. Amen. Well, how are you going to do that? 
Most of us have anger inside of us because we have hurts. That's where our anger's coming from. Hurts. We say, I was born that way. No, we got made that way. We had hurts through life and they changed us from what we were of a two-year-old. We weren't born that way. But only the cross is our solution. You have to realize that I am not to hurt anybody. Now, how am I going to do that? Well, quite frankly, I've been hurt so much. I'm not careful. I just I burst out and I just tell them what I think about. Them, right? <laughs> yeah. That's not what the Word calls me to do. How many believe Jesus meant it on the cross when He said, "Father, forgive them; they don't know what they're yeah. doing." Yeah. 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 He really meant it. Well, how do I get to the point where I say that about people? Well, Father, forgive them; they really don't know what they're doing. To them. I can't do that unless I encounter the cross again. And if I pick it up, I let it change me. Okay, everybody got what he says here. Now we're going to see what Mark mentions it twice. Okay, Mark 8:34 and 35. I want to show you. We're going to do spiritual exercise. Some of you are starting to fall asleep in Revelation. You can't fall asleep in Revelation. So we're going to do exercise. <laughs> so don't worry about it. <clears throat> 34 and 35. Bell read out. And then he, and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake in the gospels shall save it. Amen. Anything added here? See, I want you to really study this. He repeats this going to be three times or twice, but there's going to be some words added along the way, some taken away. So this is a homework, too, that you might. Okay, 1021 is the same one. We in Christianity have really concentrated on... And we've totally misunderstood it. Okay. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thou, go thy way and sell whatsoever thou hast and give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come take up the cross and follow me. <coughs> Okay. We're going down to the last. We're going to read Luke now and see what he has. What was added here? <clears throat> Sell your stuff. Sell your stuff. Give it for them. It's added here. He keeps adding little different things each time. And they're important what he adds. Now we're going to talk about that. Uh Luke 923. <coughs> 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 Deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. What do you add here? Daily. 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 See, we just pass through things. We don't realize there's something different every time in this six times that God's going to tell us something. Okay, 1427 of Luke. Y'all getting good. Y'all starting to read details now.
and whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Whoa. Did he add something? Mm -hmm. He never said that to the others. Mm -hmm. He's steeper. Every time mm -hmm. he adds something. Now, Jesus really told the same thing about the Good Samaritan. He didn't tell the Good Samaritan, go sell everything and go live poor. You know, a lot of people have talked, you know, that, but that's not what he really said. He said, on your daily walk, or you're walking through life, there are hurting people all around you. If you're worried about your money, you're not going to see them. If you worry about yourself, you're not going to see them. If you're led by all your hurts, you're never really going to see them. But daily, you really pick up love and you carry it. And you are the solution to the problem. Amen. You see, cross is really love. Manifest to the Lord. Well, sure. People who don't understand the cross say it's sadistic. <clears throat> it's cruel. This man beaten to a pulp and he beat all night. and then. But it's really the cross that heals. Now, we try to make the cross into something that we just use authority with and we, we claim healing on people but we don't deal with them out of love and love is the key to the power. Amen. He was right when he told Constantine this is how you're going to conquer the world. <laughs> but Constantine made it into a form of government. It was never meant to be that way if one man wrote it. Wrong interpretation. <laughs> yeah, wrong interpretation. Well, the Jewish side they got a wrong interpretation. They think it's all Outward, but what's wrong? You can't correct what's in. They're still trying to cut flesh when only the cross will cut. And if you really understand the cross, it'll cut you. The Word of God is sharp as a two-edged sword, cutting asunder. And what is the sword he uses? Always be the cross. In this, you'll conquer. The cross really shows you what love is. Now, before we get through, I'm going to read to you what the Word says love is, and you listen to it. Because we all in this church have to develop it before the people start pouring through that stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's nigh at hand. Yes, it is. I've got to get healed myself. Have I had hurts? I've been wounded more than probably any of you in church, let me tell you. Some of you others think, no, Brother Johnny, I got wounded more. But, but the truth is, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. The cross is supposed to heal that, and we're supposed to show love. No matter. <laughs> Unless you've ever been hurt, you can't understand the other person, as a matter of fact. That's true. Mm -hmm. The cross is, Jesus suffered. And he went all the way around for us. And we're going to follow the same path. Everybody got that? What about the end time? We told it this morning in the lesson. It was so good this morning. I hate y'all missed it. It was so good. It really brought out the end time and how the things are being set up against the Christian church. And some of us are going into captivity. Some of us are going into prison. And right in the middle of it, this says, but don't lose heart. Have joy. Why? Because you're learning endurance and faith. And our endurance and faith is what's going to show the cross. Everybody. Now, real quick. Book of Revelation, the tree of life, why didn't they like it? Adam and Eve didn't like the tree of life. They looked at it every day. It was there. All they had to do was go over and take the fruit out of it and live forever. They didn't like it. Why? You don't really like the looks of the cross. It's okay as long as Jesus is hanging up there, but when don't you like it? Well, we have to bury it ourselves. 
When I have to put myself up here, I don't like it. Now, we're going to be honest. We're going to be honest. But this is, the, I have to come into the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is the, the one where in God paints you the picture. He don't want to tell you how everything was created. Y'all got that? He just tells you in the beginning He created it and then evil come. That's all you need to know. You don't need, you know, He tells you how He created it and the form He created it out of it, and you probably don't believe it. Most scientists don't. Word says that He took nothing and made it something. <laughs> Y'all can't comprehend that, can you? But that's the kind of God I need. Why? Because he's going to take me with all these hurts and he's going to create something that can love the world. Amen. Amen. That's almost something out of nothing. That's how he created the beginning. And you go to the last chapter of the last book and how many know that the word there, revelation, is uh, uh, means literally the unveiling? The yes. 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 It literally means the tearing of the veil, so you can look Jesus face to face. Where is the one place you can look Jesus face to face? At the cross. At the cross. What happened was they had their backs to one another. They walked around and they turned toward each other, and they kept getting closer until they actually had to meet. And when they really met, a oneness took place. And they continued the journey and they had to come around the second time and meet. And there was a total transfer. They had to meet twice. Total this second time is really what transformed. Book of Revelation, the last chapter, has an enigma. There is one tree in the book of Revelation, but it's on both sides of the river, and it, it bears fruit 12 times a year. <laughs> First of all, the word tree is singular. Now, how can you have a tree on both sides of the river be one tree? It's a <laughs> but what is the river that causes all this to come into place? The Spirit. Oh, it's the Spirit. That's all he's saying. How's God going to do all this? How's He going to transform mankind? He's going to do it by Spirit and cross. Cross is the greatest love picture that you will ever have. And it's what you are supposed to show the world and I'm supposed to show the world is a cross. If I do that, the power of the river that will flow will change the world. That's the gospel. Do you know what Paul said about the cross? It is the wisdom of God. It is the power of God. Amen. How can it be power? We all want to see the power, the demonstrations. But if we don't learn the cross, it'll never happen to us, and somebody else will. God's going to have a church. Amen. Mm -hmm. That church will have a cross mentality. Everybody got that? I hope somebody's getting excited. There's a new thing being birthed on the earth. And we don't have long to train. I even know how many years before the second phase will be. So I'm excited. Do I expect Satan to try things like this? You might as well get used to it. He's going to try, but he's defeated. Amen. But God wants to develop an overcoming attitude in you. That's no right. matter what you see, you know the end. Yeah. I am victorious. Yeah. Now we're going to have a little exercise. Everybody stand up. Now, I don't, I, I beg you to, I don't command you to, I don't have the authority to command you. It's your choice. But what I want you to do is this. This is a picture. 
<laughs> okay? Everybody got it? Look at your neighbor. Look around. Okay, thank you. Now you got the picture. You be seated. Do you know what disturbs most praise people? Well, first of all, each musician says, I can't hear myself play. How many have heard that? Huh? Yeah. Every sound man I met in church, even though they have headsets, every one of them will say, I can't hear myself play. What does every singer say? I can't hear myself sing. They don't know the main point. <laughs> What is the main point when you come into the place where you're all playing your instrument right? You can hear yourself. It's harmony. It's harmony. In the book of Revelation, when you read about it, they were standing upon the throne, and there was a sound, there's a voice of many waters. What is that? It's people coming into harmony with the Spirit of God. The waters is the river of the Spirit, but each one of them is adding their thing. None is above the other. I don't have to hear what I'm doing when I'm out of harmony with everybody else. Then everybody will hear me. <laughs> Isn't that right? So in the church, when one of us gets out of harmony, everybody will hear it. That's right. Well, what is this harmony? It's the cross. It binds all of us together in love. Now, I'm going to read myself uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. You see, love is the cross. How many know in uh, John wrote about love more than anybody else? Yes. Anybody know that? How many know that John thought he loved Jesus more than anybody else? Jesus loved him more than anybody else? How many know in the first unveiling, Jesus falls flat on, I mean, Paul, uh, John fell fat on his face because he had a different revelation of Jesus. He was stunned. He knew Jesus better than anybody else on the earth. But he saw him as transform, transformation. And it staggered him to the place he fell. And his feet. Now John wit witnessed the crucifixion. He was at the foot of the cross. But now this unveiling of through time has taken place and John sees it. And it staggers him to the most <clears throat> degree that he just completely falls on his face right at his feet. Why? He saw the effect. The final effect of the cross. And you have to understand the final effect of the cross. It's not about one of us being able to sing. It's about all of us coming into the place of harmony. Mm -hmm. It's not about I have a beautiful gift and I want you to look at my gift. My gift is a pro really the solution to your problem. And your problem. I'm just a solution. And unless I, I sing in harmony with the other gifts, I'll just be that one that's singing out too. And what do we know the tune is? Well, it's found in 1 Corinthians 13. <laughs> and this is where I examined myself. Probably we need to put it up on the wall what love is. And I'm going to read this version because it just tells it like it is. Well, let's go to 
verse 3. If I give everything I have to the poor, remember what about the Good Samaritan? He didn't have to give everything to the poor. He had stopped and noticed somebody on the way. If I give everything to the poor and even sacrifice my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I'd be nobody whatsoever. Amen. We have took deny yourself and we took it. I have to deny myself food. I have to deny myself money. I have to be in poverty all the time. No. I have to deny my nature. Yes. 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 And the Amen. only thing that will help me do that is the cross. That's right. Love is my goal. That's right. That's what the cross is. Jesus showed the world love through the cross. And everything's going good. You're not really showing anything to anything. But when the world turns against you and they beat you up and they put you on a cross and you can say truthfully, forgive them, that's what. That's what changes the world. It's what changes me and you. So, giving everything up as far as goods and everything, Paul... He knew the secret of the cross. He knew it was the wisdom of God, the power of God. And here he says, you can give things up and still not love. You can deny yourself things still not have love. But listen to what he says love is. John is supposed to be patient and kind. John is not to be jealous or boastful or proud. Or ever rude. Amen. Love from John never will demand its own way. John is never acts out of being irritable. Anybody hollering out to the side? I do. Yeah. <laughs> there was frustration. John never keeps a record of whenever he's been wrong. <laughs> That's a toughie. <laughs> but you see, this is what the cross is doing. This is the goal of the cross, and this hurts. It slices what I am. Am I really like that? I'm in a process of change. And this is the goal God has for me, and He's going to send me everything He can to make me that way. Amen. But if less I yield to the cross, I'll never change. I hear people all the time saying, I was made that way, I was born that way, I can't change. They don't know the power of the cross. What's the last church going to do? They're going to deny the power of their own. The power of their own of what? <laughs> the cross. It's a cross that changes us. It shows us what love is. And now through the Holy Spirit, God can change us if we really want to change. If I'm willing to do this. Have I been hurt in church? Yes. But I don't remember who does it. Because I'm supposed to forget it. Amen. Let it be healed in me. That means i got to come to the cross and say, be honest with Father. Father... I demand my rights. I got hurt. And what does Father do? Sticks out his two hands. Now I'm going to give you the clue of everything. I made you stand up so you would know eternity. When this life is over, when you go to the judgment seat of Christ, what will you say? That's all Jesus has to say to you. Those that said, I didn't believe you, I didn't want you, all that, they're going to look at the palm of his hands. The wonderful thing about the Jewish nation, if you read the prophecy, is they will start asking you, where did you get your wounds? I was wounded in the house of my brothers. They will see the wounds. Jesus is going to show the Jewish nation the cross. He's going to show the Gentile 
the cross. And the cross not only is what every sinner is going to look at when they look at Jesus, because He Himself will stand and show them His hands and His feet. And they will have no excuse. None. Because that was as much as He could love them. was this much. Amen. And there is no nothing else. But what about how is He going to judge us Christians? What will mean the work we do throughout eternity? What measure will He judge us with? He's going to examine how much we look like the cross. You got that picture. It's not about your works. It's not about what you sold everything went gave to the poor. It's whether you loved. How was your cap cross carried? They'll say they those who stand in front of him and they'll say, but Master, we've done wonderful works in your name. We cast out devils. We've done this and that. And what will he say? You never came back to that place in this covenant on the cross. And you never picked up your cross. Because you didn't love. Shall I read on? What love is? He keeps no record of what is wrong. Verse 6, It's never glad about injustice, but rejoices when truth wins out. How many times have you you been in this circumstance where people were talking about somebody else? I work in a shop where we kid each other all the time. You have to have a thick skin to be in that shop because Anytime you mess up, they, they draw cartoons and it'll be on the wall. We kid each other, rib each other. But we had a young man who had a chip on his shoulder because of his race. And they literally ostracized him in that group. And they would sit around and talk about him when he behind his back. And it's tempting to judge, I mean, to jump in with them when you see the chip on somebody's shoulder. But when you realize that chip's there because he'd been hurt so much, you start thinking of him differently. Mm -hmm. And you risk losing all those others in that shop just to say, I'd like him to work with me. And you're like a kid with him. You just kind of live. Your reward is. Later on, he starts coming to the Wednesday night, I mean Wednesday prayer meeting at work. And he calls me aside by himself and he said, I want you to know I, I gave my life to Christ. I'm in church. Amen. And you know, he told me the greatest thing the other day where he told uh, the other fellow I work with. He told him, he said, I need to go back to everybody in that shop and apologize for my head. What if I had have been like the rest of the group and not so sad? You see, the only way we're going to change the world is cross. I never join in with them when I see injustice. I rejoice when truth wins out. Love never gives up. We once had a fellow in this church, I had a prophet with me, and he said, Don't you know that fellow wants your position? He wants to be pastor there. You know what I told him? I said, if that's what God wants, so what? And he said, you ought to get rid of him. And I said, I don't want to get rid of him. I don't want to love him. And he said, you're crazy. No, I said, no, I said, if God can't defend me, and I don't need to be pastor anyway. 
Lynn taught me a lesson about God defeating you. Believe me, you've got a sense of humor doing it, but he'll always defend you if you put it his way. But if you try to do it yourself, you're going to cut out good wheat somewhere down the line. You know, Jesus said, don't pull up the tares of the wheat, you just leave. Because in pulling up wheat, what will you do? I mean, tares. You'll pull up good fruit, good wheat. Love never gives up. Love sees the possibilities in our nature. It never loses faith. It's always hopeful and joyful. Hell, are you always hopeful and joyful when the bad times come? You're pissed in class. Or is that person hurt you? <laughs> What is our solution if I find out? Well, I got a lot of times I say no when I measure up this crawl. And I, a lot of times I'll say, uh, no, I didn't handle that too well. What does that mean me to do? I got to go back to the crawl. Father, I can't do this thing. Let me tell you, I think his attitude stinks. <laughs> Father says, what do I do? Father says, I'm going to love you. I'm going to believe he's going to change. How many think that Jesus knew what was in Jesus? Absolutely. <clears throat> and what on earth did he put him in charge of him? He was a thief. It was an opportunity. The only way he was going to change is to face his problem. Amen. And Jesus, I believe, really wanted him to change. Mm -hmm. Jesus won't separate you from your problem. He'll make you face it. That person that you like the least is probably be the one you'll end up praying for the most. And carrying them on your back. That's just the way God works. Because He has to change us, circumcise our heart. <laughs> It endures every circumstance. It doesn't matter whether it's a good circumstance or bad circumstance. It's going to endure it. You're going to conquer it. It's, going to... it's what love did. Love will last forever, but prophecy and speaking in unknown tongues and special knowledge are going to disappear when we come to Him face to face. When this is over, we won't need these gifts to build each other. But love is eternal. That's why we can never lose our temper with anybody in this church when they come in. You know what destroys the church is never the outside, it's always the inside. We have to have a praise team that nobody's instrument will be louder than the other. Or no singer more, more brilliant and beautiful than the other. Until we come in, we all have one voice. And the music and the sound of our voices all become one. Will we really be the sound of many waters? And do you know that's how God is going to speak in the book of Revelation? If you'll notice the book of Revelation, when God speaks, it, it speaks with the sound of an ocean made up of rivers that have come together. That's the picture he paints of what he's going to do with the world. It's not just one cross that will win the world. It's of all of us joining that cross and coming together that will change the world. Each of you have a just as important place in this house as I do. Kara has just as important place in this house as I do. You need to know what the other's prophecies are. 
you're supposed to get them there. Not just me, just not Margaret. <clears throat> How many know that Mr. B over there, the prophet said that he would stand and preach when he was young? Did he mention an age? He just said when he was very young. Did you know that's him? Do you know Kara and Aaron? They're going to speak before the nation. She's going to prophesy and he's going to prophesy. Has that been said over him? Yes, it has. It's in them. Now, how am I supposed to treat them? After just kids. No. They have tremendous giftings in them. And I'm here to build those giftings up. Man. Each one of you. Some of you feel like losers. You've always been a loser. That you don't know what you do to my heart. You have a gift of prophecy in you. And I tell you more, but you don't want to know it yet. You've got some training to go through. But it's in you. You're a prophetic. Very. Person. <laughs> you are, what do you call that word, Margaret? Parabolic. Parabolic prophet. They are unique and rare. You find them in the Old Testament where they took the arrows and they would beat it. Why? They were showing that we're supposed to take our arrows and defeat the enemy. And you keep at it. You don't do it one time. You keep doing it till the enemy is totally defeated. That's your call in your life. Your call to the nations. In a short time, I really want to be the one who goes with you that first trip. I want to, because Papa wants to see his children. Have success. That's what Papa's all about. That's what Lynn and I work is here is all about. You don't realize the size of the church God's already promised me. Years ago, He even spoke of my death years ago. And now I see it happening. I wanted to throw in the towel, and a prophet told me he knew what I was at that service for. But he said, I want to tell you, God is sending people to you with a different heart, and they will be the joy of your heart. And that's who you are. I was ready to throw it up, and I've been hurt enough, and when you have your own children stab you in the back, it really, it wounds you. And I had it done. Lynn and I had it done. But God says, he showed me the cross in his hands. Told me about Peter tonight. Did he give up on Peter? No. He's not giving up. I'm not giving up on you. But you have to realize none of us can come to the place and deal with each other in anger. And I know how you feel because I was born with anger, it seemed like. And I know there's wounds in there that I've had to deal with over the ages to get rid of my anger. And sometimes Margaret will look at me and I just have to go silent and go away. She knows that I have to deal with something. Before I could preach this, I went to work Friday and I'm going through Bluntville and Level, uh, when you go through 394, it's four lanes. You get to the interstate and it turns into two. And this fella, I saw him way back there. He was flying. And that started, I was in the right lane, and I started up through there where it was just one, and he was right beside me. And you know what I used to would have done? <laughs> it didn't matter if we wrecked our cars, but I wouldn't have given him that spot. It was mine. I had to wrap away. But instead I throw on my brakes. I just let him go. And I kind of laughed. I said, wonder what he's in such a hurry about. And then I realized, they're with me. I've gone through my life and I'm a mad driver. You know? I'm in a hurry driver. I hate that person gets out in that left lane and that's the fast lane, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the fast <laughs> lane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to drive him off for me. 
<laughs> God always sends me those. Me and Lynn life back now. I can go down the highway. We'd be in such a hurry. We'd be on a timeline. I hate to be late. And who does God send? That little old lady. Or Travis. <laughs> See, we got a life together. Cross is going to take care of it. Cross is going to speed him up a little bit. What's he going to do to me? Slow you down. Slow me down. Enjoy the roses. We had a wonderful picture. I went hiking all by myself while we were up at the, the breaks. And the breaks were so important to me. My dad and my mom, when they got married, my dad built that railroad through there. We stopped at a little place where uh, it was a history of the railroad there. And it was normally closed. It says it was closed, but there was two gentlemen inside. And I really didn't want to go in. My brother-in-law made me go in, but there I found the Darnell name in the old registers. It wasn't my dad that it was following my kin folks. See, that's part of my heritage there. That's before my dad got saved. He lived a different kind of life. I never knew my dad in that life. My other sisters and my brother did. They knew my dad in that life. I didn't. My dad worked all his life. He never had a childhood. And he was never a grandpa. Because he didn't know how to relate to children. At 12 years old, he supported his mother, his father, and his sisters. And he sent all of his sisters to school. His first job was him and his uncle, who was almost the same age, they cut down trees together. And they had one great old big saw, and one would pull and one would push. And they worked as a team. And there I saw the instruments that was used on the railroad. My dad worked with another man. The other man set that spike, and they had the tools there. And my dad picked up that big sledgehammer and he made one blow and drove that into it. My dad was a small man, but he was the strongest man I ever saw. But he got it through driving the railroad. It, and I was up at one of those viewpoints, and I was looking at that, and God said, that's what it's about. It's two working together. I'm working with you all the time. I'm working to change somebody else if you'll show them the cross. But to do that, I have to change you. Amen. I'm not to be a loud voice who, who everybody admires my voice and my, my speech. And Paul said that it's not about the speech. I, I love that. He said it's not about my speech. He said it's about the cross. Mm -hmm. That's First Corinthians, first chapter. If you want to read it, it's wonderful. And he makes a statement. It, the power and the wisdom of God is in that cross. To us, to the world, it's foolishness. But it's the only thing that will change. In the next few weeks, all of us need to look at 1 Corinthians 13. You see, worldliness is not all those other things. Worldliness is not having blood. If I love my wife, am I going to commit adultery? No, well, I'm not going to destroy that relationship. You see, if I don't do it God's way, I'll destroy everything around me. That's right. Only the way of the cross will work. But it has to bring all of us into the same unity. And I have to learn, no matter what you do, I forgive you. I've got to walk in forgiveness. Why? That he forgave me. How can I say, I hold this against you and I'm going to keep it as my right when Daddy forgave me everything? Why does it say, judge not your brother, lest you also be judged? Because you cut, take away, when you hold something against somebody, you take away the effect of the cross. You want to be healed? We, it's not about learning the right formulas. It's learning about the way of the cross. 
and let him cross for ten years. I'm going to blow some of your theology. Sometimes God allows sickness in your life. Mm -hmm. Does He do it to be cruel? No. He wants you to come to the place of the cross. The Word says we're to confess our sins one to another. I've never seen that done because I don't trust enough Christians to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Told you the truth, didn't it? Yeah. But I want you to come to a place and be so comfortable in this house that I can tell you my sins, my fault. My wife already knows them, but maybe you don't. She knows about my temper, don't you? Yeah. Still does. It ruins our reputation. I mean, our relationship if I lose my temper. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. See, that's why mm -hmm. tempers are bad. It ruins relationships. So if we're going to stand up. Last time, we're going to get out of here. But unless we really face the cross, and really change all of us, it's not just me. And we enter into a covenant of being one. That's the only way this place is going to succeed. This is a special day in the life of this church. We have reached the place where we have come to right here. The cross is facing all of us right here. How much are you going to commit to this people? I said, how much are you going to commit to your brother and sister around you? Why do we pay tithes? Pastor, we've had miracle after miracle in this church. Every month we, we look like we're going to pay. <laughs> I don't know how many months in a row that's happened, but God always did a miracle in the end, and it's always been somebody He speaks to and He brings them up. Amen. But I should be putting money in here Permissions right now, so somebody else can go. See, it's easy to sip that money for myself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to enjoy it. What's the cross do? Somebody else. I'm going to give so somebody else can go. Do I have that attitude? Mm -hmm. See, I want you to look around. Everybody in church. They are God's gift to you. Some of them are the rocks that make the jewels out of you. <laughs> you might know how the jewels are polished. <laughs> well, some of you, I want to tell you something. You have precious gifts of God. God will give you. You, you. you sometimes just think you're not worth anything. Spirit of the Lord spoke to me up there and oh, yo, when I looked at you. He said, I love that one. I put things within there that other people need and she looks at herself and she doesn't see any work. And I'm here to tell you, God doesn't look at you that way. He sees you as valuable and you're right in the palm of His hand. But you have decisions to make. He said, you have decisions to make. Same decisions we're all going to have to make. Are we really wanting to pick up the cross and follow Him? Hallelujah. See, we're all doing that today. Are we going to pick up our cross? Are we really going to commit to this thing? Did you know this place started? We had a big congregation. We Three of us couples went together and we risked everything and God sent everybody away except us three couples. <laughs> How would you like to do that when you got all your stake and all your money and your house and your lands all in this stake to it? But you know God's always been faithful. He ain't missed a payment here. Amen. Amen. 
I don't think he's going to miss it more. But if we don't join together, God will end this house and he will send us in a whole different direction. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we just have a short time. And I want to get started. I don't want to play around with problems anymore. I want to start training more and more. Okay? So this Sunday, are you in or are you out? Are you willing to pick up a cross for you? You really don't need to. Are you willing to commit yourself and everything else? Or you really don't want to? Bless you. See, that's where we are. That's what the cross does. Most of us in church, they want to be a big eye somewhere and not flow in harmony. God ain't called us to do that. We're coming into one voice. But you all hold the key together. So we're all going to have to learn to love one another. Okay? There's a prophetic word still around here, and I, I don't have it yet, but somebody got a word. It's here. I, I sense it's here. Anybody got something to say? Anybody? You got anything, brother? Okay. I want every mind free for what we're going to do. Today we're either going to make a covenant with each other and the success of everybody else. You're going to work toward the success of everybody else around you. And you say yourself. Your only real success is if you'll do that. <laughs> That's how God can success. Not whether I have the biggest church in the world, whether I've trained people and I've given myself to the point that they will far out, uh, achieve more than me. It's what I've given my life to, and that's what we have given our life. It's not about it. God's going to change in just a few years about our what we do. Doesn't mean we're leaving this house. It means it's going to change. But for a time, we're going to have to have intensive training. Some of you are going to meet alone and we're going to train. Some of you are going to meet in groups and we're going to train. And by the time, in a short time, I won't be doing the training you will. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. It won't be my job anymore. So i got to hurry. Now I'm in a hurry. And I don't want to play around. Y'all got Amen. that? Either Amen. We're going to commit to this or I'm going somewhere out. else. In or out. In or out. <laughs> okay? But before we leave here, everybody should look at the cross and count the cops. No man goes to war. That's what? He counts the cops. Do you believe the cross will work? Yes. I don't know many other churches that have tried it, quite frankly. It really had that nature of the cross. This is something that will be different. At least what I've been through. <laughs> so am I going to commit to it? Am I going to commit my life to Jesus Christ for it? It's really what it boils down to. Am I really going to pick up the cross and it not be just a symbol, but it be a part of me every day, and I'm going to be sensitive to everybody around me. And in this church, I'm going to be sensitive. You have the sweetest disposition. I never want to hurt you. I've been through some of the hurts you have, and I know the path you've come. I know the tears you've shed. I know about things you've lost. I'm going to carry you on my back and I expect you to carry me bring this thing together. So that's, if you will stand everybody and you'll look around, 
And you will say to God, I give myself to the cross in this people. And it's better if you don't fail than to bow and break it. Amen. Amen. That's the word. Because God holds you responsible for whatever you say with your mouth. And you can't be changing your mind all the time. The Word says a man who keeps changing his mind is unstable. That's right. right. He's double-minded. Double-minded. So we in this together or we ain't in this together. We're going to make it by the crossway or and we're going to walk in power, but it will be the power of the cross. Not some big eye here. So, you tell Father. I wish we'd had communion today. You're going to have to tell Father today. I right, take time. We, we really need to hurry. It's okay. And John is sick again. Let's pray for him. We got some other things to do. I've got to apologize to people and sing to them before we leave. <laughs> after we make our commitment. Okay? Joan's been sick for over a month. Some of us have had the same problem. We're dealing with the same problem right now. So he's trying to stop us any way he can. Yeah, uh, it don't matter. God's my healer. I'm going to be healed. But you close your eyes right now. Yes. I want you to look at the cross right now. And between you and God, not between me and you or anything else, between you and God, you make your vow whether in your commitment to that cross of this people or not. Father, you called us to a place in covenant today that we are entering the realm of oneness with you. And you're going to do new things in the earth even though you never change. But you're going to show signs and things of your power that we've never seen before. Even us who have been in the church for 40 years and have seen many demonstrations of your spirit, you're going to show us new demonstrations of your spirit. But it will occur because we come into oneness with you and each other. And that's what you're going to show to the world. I rejoice in you and what you're doing in the world. Even this United States, you're shaking its foundation. And they're lining up on both sides. Either for or against us. And right now, Father, I commit myself Everything that I am, everything I own, everything that I will own, I commit it to you in supplying the needs of these my brothers and my sisters. I commit my time. For you're going to have to supply the energy at my age, Father, and give me you. I thank you that you revealed to me even my, my departure from this world and win. And I thank you for it, Father. <coughs> I thank you for revealing the gifts that lie within these people and each individual. I thank you when they come to the door how many times you've shown me how they're key to the puzzle that you are working and making a beautiful mosaic. Lord, a beautiful picture that ends in the last chapter of the book of Revelation. I thank you. They are the leaves for the healing of the nations, part of the tree, tree of life. And I commit myself to it, Father. Here before this congregation and before your throne, before your cross, I commit. Let it be sealed as a covenant. In your holy name, I ask. You. Now, you silently or out loud, however you want to do it. It's up to you facing the cross. 
or are you going for me?